Welcome everyone. Today I am speaking with Ann Davis. She has been in the dating and counseling industry for 30 years. She has her undergrad in sociology and a master's in psychology. She has a passion for helping individuals and couples find love that they deserve. Thank you for joining us, Lori. Thank you, my pleasure. How does one, how does one's mindset affect their presence in the dating world? You know, that's one of those things that I think a lot of people miss. They, they get out there and they start dating and you've run across people and they, they're frustrated and they're not having great experiences. And when you listen to singles talk about their frustration and their experiences with dating, it's usually that all the bad experiences as they've had. And then they talk about there's no good men, there's no good women, they all want this, they all want that. And all of that talk is about what's wrong with everybody else out there. And that whole missing piece that most people don't get is that they're influencing their own dating experience. And they're influencing that experience by their thoughts. It all really starts with how they're thinking. And so when you have these thoughts of, I'm too old, I'm too heavy, I'm not, you know, men want something different, whatever those thoughts are, you know, um, maybe there isn't anybody right out there for me. They're, they're just like, there's numerous thoughts, right? But when you have those thoughts and that's what you're thinking, I tell my clients that it's almost like it's tattooed across your forehead and believe it or not, when you start to go out on dates and you start to get out in the world, people see that, not really, right? Obviously, they don't really see the words tattooed on your forehead. But there is this law of attraction. There's this energy field out there. Whether we believe it or not, whether we think so or not, it's there. And there's science that proves it, by the way. So if you want to know about that, contact me on, on something separate. And I can talk to you actually about, I'm so sorry, I did not turn off my phone. Um, I can talk to you about the science behind it, but we are putting out that energy. And so we're putting out the energy. So do you wanna put out the energy that there are no good men out there? And then you wonder why all the men you meet aren't the right ones. And you go, see, there's no good men out there. And what people don't realize is that those beliefs, those thoughts are actually affecting the people that you're attracting. And it's also affecting how you show up, right? If you don't believe that you're going to have a good experience dating, if you don't believe, if you go, all right, I'm trying this online dating thing, but I know it's not going to work because it doesn't work. And then you show up on your first online dating. Are you going to show up happy and excited and in a good mood? Chances are you're going to show up with a little bit of a chip on your shoulder, right? Going, well, this isn't going to work, but I'm going to do it anyway. And so... Our thoughts, our beliefs in so many ways, more ways than we have time to talk about today, really do affect the experience that you're, that you're going to have or that you're having. So instead of pointing the finger outward at everybody else, if you're frustrated and you're not getting what you want in the dating world, you need to kind of first start with taking a look at us and what we are, what we're putting into this whole dating experience. Great. That is so true. Describe how someone can become aware of how they are showing up. So one of the ways to be aware of how you're showing up is to look at the experiences that you're having, right? Um, now that doesn't mean that if you have one bad date, and in a minute, maybe we'll talk about, my belief is that there are no bad dates. There's just learning experiences. But if you have one or two dates where you meet somebody and they really aren't what you're looking for, and it really doesn't go well, there's no, you know, you just don't click and you're like, oh, I didn't, that really wasn't great. Right. Um, one or two of those, well, that's to be expected, right? There's a lot of people out there and we're gonna meet people in order to find our, the love of our life or the right one for us. We may have to meet some people that aren't right for us. 
But if that is becoming a pattern for you, and it's more than once or twice, then you know you've got some work to do. So the first thing to do is to look at your experience that you're having if you're actively dating. The other thing, whether you're dating or not, is to really take a look at what your thoughts are. So sit down quietly, give yourself you know, a comfortable spot, do some deep breaths, kind of get centered, and think about yourself. Maybe even close your eyes and imagine yourself out in the world dating. How does that feel? What comes up? You know, do you go, <gasps> no, like, you know, or, or, you know, do you think, no, I'm not ready for that? Or no, I've got to lose weight first, or I have to do this, or I have to do that. So first start to take a look at you. What beliefs might you have about you? And are you ready for a relationship? Are you good enough? You know, and then take a look at beliefs about men or women, like who you're going to be dating. You know, ask yourself some questions and just do some free journaling. Some, you know, get, just think about it and just start writing down whatever comes to you. What do you think about dating and about men? And then write that down. Now, what do you think about relationships? You know, do you believe that long-term relationships are possible? Do you believe there's someone out there for you? Do you, so do some, do some journaling, do some writing and sort of see what comes up for you because that's going to give you an area of some of the things you might need to work on. Great advice. Great advice. Um, what advice would you offer to help someone shift their mindset? So they've all, they've journaled, they've assessed their behaviors, their feelings about dating, their feelings about the possibility of relationships. So how, if somebody truly does want a relationship, truly is willing to do the work to change, as well as wants to experience a positive, um, a positive date, Mm -hmm. which could possibly turn into a relationship. So what advice would you offer them to help change that mindset? So becoming aware, obviously, is the first step. And then, so when we start to think about working on changing that, I was working with a client recently, and she came back after a couple sessions and said, you know what, I get it now. She said, I have this idea in my mind of who I want to attract. She said, but it became very clear to me that I wasn't showing up in the world as somebody that that person would be attracted to. She said, I'm too critical, I'm too harsh. And she had come to me actually saying that was one of, the, one of her goals was that she wanted to work on not being so critical, that she realized that that was something that wasn't serving her well. And she said, you know, it just really, I really got it that I'm not gonna attract who I want if that's how I'm showing up because they're not gonna be interested in me. So think about that. Think about how are you showing up in the world? Are you showing up as somebody that this partner that you want would be attracted to? And that can help you to start to make some shifts, you know, to think about as you head out, even if it's just as simple as to the grocery store, you know, thinking about how do you look? Does it mean that you've got to be dressed to the nines? but maybe being aware before you walk out the door. What if I met somebody? Would I want to meet them? You know, so maybe I'll, I'll take a little bit of extra time. Um, what, what is my mindset like before I walk out the door? Am I walking out going, this could be the day? Like maybe, you never know. I could meet somebody somewhere. I was doing an interview. Somebody was interviewing me a few years ago, and she said that she was at a sports bar with a friend of hers, not a place she would normally go. She had her hair in a ponytail, she had a sweatshirt on, and you know, she really wasn't thinking, and, and that's actually where she met her husband. Um, and she was like, if I'd known I'd met him, maybe I might have taken a little more care. But thinking about what is your attitude? Like, well, what is? Like, today could be the day that, sorry, my cat just went running and jumping up onto my desk, too funny. Um, today <laughs> could be the day. So how do I look? What is my attitude like? Mm -hmm. um, you know, am I happy with my life? Do I need to add some things to my life that might bring me more joy? Happy singles attract better partners than somebody that's not. They attract partners quicker. So what can you just on a, just a daily basis be thinking about? What can I do to be happier? What can I do to what if 
this was the day? What if this was the moment that I was going to attract somebody? Am I showing up in the way that they, if they were there, they would be interested in me? Um, and then, you know, maybe if you identify some beliefs that you have that aren't serving you, starting to look at turning those around and what could you say? You know, if your belief is, I'm never going to meet the right person for me. I haven't yet. I'm never going to meet the right person. What if you could start to say to yourself, up until now, I haven't met the right person, right? That leaves some opportunity that you could. You know, I'm in the process of attracting my right partner. So softening the statements a little and, and really doing some work around, I love Louise Hay and I love mirror work. So doing some work about looking in the mirror and saying, I deserve to have an amazing relationship. I, I am worthy of this partner that I want. You know, I mean, and you can, you can look online and look up, you know, affirmations for dating. You can, I mean, I have an online course. Other people have things. Um, obviously, I'm going to say that if you're trying to do this by yourself and you're frustrated and it's, you're not making the progress you want, um, really consider talking to somebody and maybe getting a little bit of help. If don't stay frustrated, you know, try to do it on your own. I think that's fine. I have no problem with that. But don't stay frustrated for too long because you might be surprised that a few sessions with the right person could really turn that around for you as opposed to years of being frustrated. Yeah. Wonderful advice. So changing one's mindset from a negative statement to a positive statement, putting those out there, saying those things regularly to yourself does change how you think. And it changes your experience. You know, it starts with your thoughts. So we have these thoughts that come from beliefs that we have. But remember, a belief is only a thought that you've been thinking over and over. And you can change that by thinking a different thought. Not instantly. It takes some time, right? People will say, well, this whole affirmation thing doesn't work. Well, it doesn't work overnight. And it doesn't work if you say two affirmations a day, positive ones and you say 300 negative ones, right? Like, so we gotta be realistic about it, yes. but it does work. So thinking about as you change your thoughts, those change your beliefs, those thoughts lead to different feelings. Pretty quickly, actually, the thoughts lead to the, the feelings pretty quickly. Those having different feelings leads to acting different. So for instance, if you've been pretty negative about relationships or dating, You've got some beliefs, but you start having some different thoughts and consciously, I'll tell people sometimes, get your phone out. Nobody goes very far without their phone and set, well, there's apps you can get, mindfulness apps, but if you don't even want to do that, set random timers on your phone. And when they go off, you know, every hour, every two hours, whatever you decide, as soon as that timer goes off, that's your cue to say your affirmations, to check in on your thoughts to think more positive thoughts. As you start to do that, you're gonna to start to feel different. And when you feel different, I can tell when clients get it because they'll, if, I see, if I'm seeing them, if I'm not just doing phone sessions with them, I can see the smile on their face, the sparkle in their eye, they look different. And I've had clients tell me, when I get it, all of a sudden, things start happening different. Men start coming up to me at the grocery and having conversations. They ask if they can help me carry something, they, not in a creepy way, you know, but right. you'll, you'll start to act different and the world around you will start to change. We don't live in a world of instant manifestation, thank goodness, because think about if every thought you thought happened immediately, it'd be chaos. Yeah. So it takes a little while to catch up to us but try it and keep doing it for a little bit. And really your experiences will change. And if you can have a little bit of a different mindset about dating. So instead of, you know, thinking, well, I wonder if, you know, ooh, this will be the one, this will be the one. What if you just went, you know what? I'm just going to go enjoy this experience. I'm going to go, I mean, really almost anybody you can, especially if you keep your dates short, so keep those first dates to really short coffee dates or a lunch date so that if the person is obviously not right for you, come on, you could have a cup of coffee and talk to somebody about something and connect a little bit. 
you know, and, and then move on. But keep the date short and just think about it as, I'm just gonna enjoy somebody's company for a little bit. If they're not the right person, what did I learn from that? Instead of leaving that date going, see another sucky date, or see, I told you there's nobody out there. You know, all men are stupid, all this, all that. Yeah, I mean, and I hear all these things. I run a pretty big singles group in Charlotte. And so I hear these statements a lot. And people don't realize they're saying them. It just like comes out. You know, and those are the, the people that have been in my group for a while that know me, they're like, oh yeah, see, that's why they're single. You know, like they, they, they get it. But the person saying it doesn't get it. So, you know, instead of saying that, make it a point to say, well, what did I learn? Maybe I learned that I, this, this other thing is really important to me that I didn't realize. Or that was just affirmation for me that I really do need somebody with this kind of personality. Um, so even if all you learn is that what you thought you wanted, you really want, that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, you're just, you're getting one step closer. I like to tell clients, I like this visual image that you've either, you've done this, I think, or you've seen it on TV where there's a big event and you've got to people camp out the night before to get tickets, you know, and they're standing in this long, long line. You see this on TV sitcoms, like all the time, right? Think about dating in that way. You're at the front of that line and somewhere in that line is the ideal partner for you, but you don't know where they are, right? So what happens is you start to date and when they're not within the first few people in that line, you go, see, I told you there's nobody there. They're not there. What if they were five people back? What if they were 50 people back? What if something happened and their alarm didn't go off and they were late and they really are on their way to the line and they haven't even gotten there yet. You know, like, so don't give up, keep going. Cause you're learning. Maybe you need to get ready for them before they'll show up. Maybe they're on their way to you, but they're moving from another town. I mean, there's just all these things. And if you think about all of that, but how many times have I had a client come to me and say, I tried online dating and it doesn't work. Well, tell me about that. Yeah, I got on for like a week and I got contacted by all these people I didn't like and see online dating doesn't work. <laughs> you know, well, yeah. And realizing too that sometimes we need dating skills. Sometimes the reason we haven't met the person is it because they're not there. Maybe our thinking is kind of okay, but maybe we have some skills that we don't know. You know, when I started dating again, I had been married for 28 years. It was a really long time. You know, I had to think about like, do I remember how to flirt? Do I, do I, you know, do I remember like dating's changed a lot in 28 years. Um, so that's the other thing is maybe you might need a little help with some skills. So don't give up, you know, talk to some people, listen to these summits, get ideas. Um, Change your thoughts, change your belief, figure out what you need to do different if it's not working, but keep moving forward because it can work. It's wonderful, profound advice. I can definitely um, relate, and I know many of our viewers will be able to relate to what you've just described because it is, it's like waiting in line. And yeah. It, it could take months, years yeah. to find the right match. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but it could also be that you're at the head of the wrong line. So if you ever met people that think they want, right, this one particular kind of person, and the reason that they're not finding them is because they're really not looking, they're really not looking in the, for the right person. Right. You know, they have this ideal image of what they want and they need a little help narrowing down. I always tell people ditch the wish list. You know, they, they need some help narrowing down what they're really looking for. They're, you know, maybe we're at whatever, however they're meeting people, but they're not meeting the right kinds of people. And that's why they haven't found the right person. When you get in the right line, then all of a sudden you meet the right person. That was sort of a little bit of my experience with online dating at first. Like the people that I thought I wanted to meet, weren't the ones I wanted to meet, you know? They were the ones that seemed too good to be true and they really were. Um, and so when I sort of learned that learning curve and started meeting the right people, I got in the right line, all of a sudden, you know, I met my partner really very quickly. 
but I had to, but I had to go through a little bit of a learning curve. So truly my experience as well. <laughs> yeah. I was in the wrong line for a very long time. Okay. <laughs> when I finally figured out which line to get in, it, I was successful. Yeah. So I can totally relate. And there are people out there who are really good at helping you to do that. You know, and so I had a client the other day say to me, think about the investment you make in buying a home. Are you not willing to make an investment in finding your life partner that you're going to share that home with? So I hadn't thought about it really in exactly that way, but I thought that was a really good way of looking at it. So if you're frustrated, stop being frustrated and think about maybe making a little bit of an investment in somebody that can help you right. quickly yes. turn around that frustration into success. Yeah. It truly made a difference for me. And I know it would make a difference for many people. And I think that's a wonderful analogy because buying a home is like one of the largest financial obligations somebody has, but yet getting into a committed relationship emotionally is a huge cost, especially if you're in the wrong relationship. Yes. So to do the work on yourself, and the understanding of what type of person you want to attract into your life on a positive level, real, it's worth the investment because that the ultimate goal is that we spend the rest of our lives with this person that we choose to find. Mm -hmm. So the, those are wonderful analogies that you have brought to us today. Thank you so much for that. Mm -hmm. Well, you think about it this way. Think about doing the work on the front end so that you don't have as much work to do on the back end so that you're not going to marriage counseling because you're unhappy. Doesn't mean there's not work to do once you find the person, but it, it's a lot, it's a, so much easier when you do the work for yourself and you, and you learn how to choose the right partner. The relationships are so much easier. Um, so it's a good investment on the front end so that the re once you find that person, you find the right one and then, and then it's easier. It certainly is. I agree. Do you have any last thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience before we move on to your gift? Um, just to remind everybody that there is somebody for everybody. So there is that right person out there for you. So if you're not finding them, like I said, let, let's figure out why so that you can be successful. If, you, if the thought comes into your head that there's not somebody right for you, just get that out of your head. There is somebody for everybody to be happy with. There really is. So don't give up. Wonderful. Thank you. I do want to mention that Lori does have her own website. It's lauriandavis.com. And her first name is spelled L-O-R-I, as it says on the screen. And Lori, what would you like to tell our audience about your generous gift? So one of the things that I talk about a lot with clients is the difference between men and women. We really are different. Um, there are differences. That's not going to change. When we can learn to understand and appreciate those differences, it makes navigating relationships so much easier. So it's an MB3 um, video or MP3 rec audio recording that I did with a wonderful gentleman um, about the differences between men and women. And it was us, he's a, a radio personality, but also has a little bit of um, a lot of spirituality in his background. So he sort of brings that into it, which whether you want that or not, it's, it's not a lot, but it was kind of a nice balance. So the two of us sitting down chatting together about the differences between men and women. And I think it's a fun conversation. It's informative. Um, and it'll definitely give you that edge if you listen to it in the dating world. Great. Thank you so much. That sounds lovely. I can't wait to listen to it. <laughs> and I hope our audience will also. There will be a link for our audience to be able to navigate to uh, Lori Ann's gift. 
um, offered to you in an email. And that will come after this show airs. Thank you. Lori, it's been a pleasure to talk with you. I truly appreciate and love everything that you have shared and offered us today. It's been um, something that speaks to my heart and I definitely share your vision about the dating world mindset and how one presents themselves to the world. And I truly appreciate your offering that information to our audience and to me also. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us today.